Well, CBS 19 is a proud partner of the Caldwell Zoo, and venomous snakes are all too common here in the Piney Woods. Today, we are slithering into some knowledge about these scaly serpents and going behind the scenes at the Caldwell Zoo. Check it out. Texas, we are no stranger to snakes, especially the venomous kind. I'm behind the scenes at the Reptile House with Caitlin Lenhart, supervisor of reptiles here at the Caldwell Zoo, and we're joined by two super cool snakes. Caitlin, who do we have here? So here we have the copperhead, and over here we have the cotton mouth. What type of venomous snakes do we usually find here in the Piney Woods? So most likely you're going to see a copperhead or a cottonmouth. Sometimes you can find a timber rattlesnake or they're sometimes called a canebrake rattlesnake, but they're the most common ones. If you happen to encounter one while you're out, say hiking on the trail or just in your own backyard, what is the best course of action? To simply just back away from the snake and leave it alone because as soon as you're out of sight, the snake will slither away and leave the area because it wants nothing to do with humans. So it will leave you alone as long as you leave it alone. And if you do happen to get bitten, what is the best way to proceed and keep yourself safe after the fact? Just calmly and quickly get to the hospital as safely as you can. Generally, if you're a healthy adult human, you have plenty of time to get to a hospital, but if it's like an elderly person or a child or a pet, or if you have underlying health conditions and you get bit by one of these snakes, it's a little bit more serious of a situation. Also, their venom causes some swelling. So if you get bit on the hands, if you have rings or jewelry on, you're gonna to wanna to take that off. Or if you get bit on like the lower leg, you're gonna to wanna to take off shoes and socks to allow some room for the swelling. What time of year do we usually see these guys out and about in East Texas? Spring, summer, fall. And during the spring and the fall is when you'll see them around during the day, but in the summer it is way too hot, so they're more active at night. So if you're looking specifically at a copperhead or a cottonmouth, how can you identify them versus just a common rat snake? Copperheads are the only snake that have this pattern here with those hourglasses. And then on the cotton mouth, they have a more blocky head, and you can definitely see the difference between the head and the neck, whereas a water snake, their head and their neck is more streamlined. Also, cotton mouths get their name because they do have a white mouth, and they will flash that mouth at you as kind of a deterrent or a warning. Is there any use for them having this venom in the wild? So mostly venom is used for getting their prey. A secondary use is for defense. But another use that venom has that not a lot of people are aware of is in the medical field. So far, scientists have made medications for blood pressure, heart disease, and stroke using snake venom. And the cool thing about the copperhead here is they have a protein in their venom that actually will stop breast cancer cell growth and it cuts off the blood supply to the tumor and so they actually have a lot of other uses in the medical field. That's cool. If people at home want to come see these two and safely behind glass that is, what is the best way to do that? We have them on exhibit here in the Herpetarium building. Well, you heard it. It's right here in the Herpetarium building. You can see this copperhead and cotton mouth along with a bunch of other really cool reptiles. Mm -hmm. I love all the great things that they do in science. Certainly. I thought it was really cool, kind of helping to destigmatize the fear of snakes, how they actually have a really cool, well, scientists are using their venom for a really cool purpose right. to help some people who need it. Absolutely. I, that definitely helped me. I have a bit of a fear of snakes. So thankfully where I was standing, the back of their little aquarium was kind of blacked out. So I, I couldn't see them. So it helped a little bit. It helped a little bit. And uh, learning that about what they're doing with their venom was really cool. Yeah, absolutely. All right, thank you, Sarah. Of course. Well, if you are 